Hi, I'm Helen from the Writing Development Centre. When you're writing an assignment for university, it's about making an answer rather than finding an answer. The answer isn't out there in some book for you to stumble across. You're actually constructing an answer out of what you find in your reading. So it's a bit like cooking. Your sources are like your ingredients. And if one of them is poor quality, a bit out of date, or doesn't do what it says it does, or just isn't quite right for what you're doing, then there's a risk it might undermine the quality of your answer. So it's about quality control, really. It's about taking responsibility, because if one of your sources is a bit dodgy, then it's not enough to say, I didn't know. It's your responsibility to make sure that everything that goes into your assignment that you use to support your thinking is of a high enough standard. As our librarian colleagues will tell you, there's no quality control mechanism for what you find on the internet. Now there is for sources that you'll find through the library, they've been what we call peer reviewed. So before they're published, two, maybe three other academics have had a look at it and made constructive comments on it, some feedback, so that it's of good quality to publish in an academic journal. But that doesn't let you off the hook. Just because it's been peer reviewed doesn't mean that it's right for your assignment. There might still be some limitations in it, some flaws that the peer reviewers didn't spot, or it might not be quite what you need for what you're trying to answer. So you still need to take responsibility to check, even though it's an academic journal article or an academic book. So how do you evaluate your sources? How do you do that quality control to make sure that anything that goes into your assignment is of a high standard? Well, it's about asking questions. You might feel, who am I? I'm just a student to critic and to criticize work that's been done by academics, by professional researchers. Well, it's just about asking questions. It's just about checking and making sure that you're satisfied with the answers to those questions. And they can be fairly straightforward questions. It's nothing terribly complicated. The first thing that you can ask is, what's there? So when you're looking at this particular book or journal article or report or data or whatever it is, what's there? You can ask yourself, how did they know when they came to that conclusion or made that statement? How do they know that? You can look at the quality of their argument. You can assess whether the evidence that they're using stacks up. You can look at the way that they have interpreted any data that they're looking at and think, am I satisfied with that? Does that make sense to me? The second thing that you can look at is what's not there. Now, this is harder. So you're looking at what did they omit? What did they not include? What have they forgotten? What have they overlooked? What assumptions have they made that they didn't even realise that they were making? So looking at what's not there. The third thing that you can do is ask what else is there? Because reading and critiquing an academic book or journal article is pretty hard. So one of the ways that you can approach that is by reading around. This is the benefit of a broad, wide reading approach. So if you want to know what you think of one journal article, compare it to another one. So you can compare whether or not there are any viewpoints available other than the one in the journal article you're looking at. You could see if any other books or articles have critiqued or criticised the one that you're reading. You could look to see if anyone else agrees with the approach of the article or book or the findings that they have come to. And that seems to suggest that if, if two or three scholars agree, then it's probably more sound than if just one person was saying it. So it's like triangulation. One person says it. OK, let's have another look at that. Two people say it. OK, there's more agreement there. I think that's probably more trustworthy. Three scholars say that similar things, then, well, there's a consensus building. It's probably more true. So if you're looking at those three things as you're reading, what's there? And am I happy with the quality of it? Can I see any flaws? Uh, what's not there? What are they forgotten or overlooked or missed out? And what else is there? How does this compare to other things that I'm reading? Then you've got a really solid basis for choosing high quality sources for your assignment and to support your arguments and your answers. If you're thinking that all sounds like quite a lot of work to be doing, you're right. This is why academic reading is hard work, because you're not just reading the text for information. You're also watching your own reaction to it all the time about, you know, do I agree with that? Does that make sense to me? What else have I read that backs that up? Maybe they've overlooked something. So academic reading is pretty hard work. You might find it slow going at first, but that's the way that you take responsibility for what you're including in your own assignments and make sure that it's the best quality.